feel like you should have some music or something on. I should do it. <laughs> we'll sit here silent. Like the Trolls soundtrack for everyone can create. Good soundtrack. Taking it too far. Okay, we'll get started. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, welcome to the next XMA webinar on top tips for unlocking lockdown creativity. Hello, everybody. Um, I guess I hope you can all see us on the screen. Yes, open. <laughs> yeah. So um, I'm Michael Conlon. I'm XMA's transformation consultant uh, in education. Um, I'm also an Apple professional learning specialist like the rest of the team here. We're going to be exploring today the amazing tools that exist in Apple's iPad and going taking a deeper dive into some of those creative elements you can use when we're in lockdown just to explore your creativity. I'm going to introduce you to the team first and then we'll take a, a walk through some of the resources that are there and then some examples of how you could be using the tools um, in your everyday um, life and work. So we're going to start off with Lee. Morning Lee, afternoon even. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I'm Lee Milligan. Normally I kind of blubber on at the beginning, but today it is Michael blubbering on. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I lead <laughs> I lead up the XMA learning team up in Glasgow, and yeah, I'm an Apple professional learning specialist as well. So yeah, looking forward to um, showing you some cool and funky tricks. Thank you very much. And now Jennifer. Hi everyone. I'm Jen. I'm part of the Glasgow um, team at XMA. And again, like Michael said, I'm APLS and I'm really excited to be here today. Excellent. Thanks, Jen. And Stuart? How are you doing, everyone? Stuart Chain from XMA as well. Part of the digital learning team. And yeah, looking forward to getting creative with you all today. Thank you. Thank you, Stuart. And Nicola? Hi, everyone. I'm Nicola Patterson from the team, uh, also an APLS and a primary school teacher. Nice to meet you all. Great, thank you very much for that. Okay, so let's get started then. I'm going to show my main screen. I'll take myself off. Hopefully you can all see that. So we're unlocking uh, lockdown creativity um, today and um, we're going to explore the iPad uh, really deeply and I want to talk to you about maybe what your life's been like, maybe what your children's lives have been like in this last this last lockdown um, phase of our lives. Um, I know certainly for me at the very beginning, I was doing a lot of consumption of content, you know, binge watching Netflix, listening to music, um, <laughs> making some time up by watching YouTube. Um, and of course, you can do that for so long, but then eventually what happens is your innate need to create something and to have some agency and to do something different from just sitting watching watching screens really does move you towards doing something different. And we've always done this. We've always done this as a, as a species in terms of our creativity and wanting to make our mark in the world. And we've seen that from the very, very earliest of times, um, that people have just taken something and created something new out of it. And so what we want to do today is to explore that a bit, a little bit further. I've seen, um, I'm sure you've seen across your social media feeds and with your friends and family, lots of different examples of people either on their own or getting together to create something anew, whether that's to sing or to make each other laugh. Um, it's really, we've, we've seen so much of it happening across the spectrum and from all age groups that really reminds us that as a human being, we need to create. It's good for the soul, it gets you, it gets you out of your head, especially when there's so much news that, are, that you're constantly consuming. To be able to do something creative really does lift the spirits, and we want to do some of that today. Now, Apple um, have created an, an amazing curriculum to support you to do this, not just as a teacher or as a student, but as a family. They've got a whole series of books covering music, drawing, photo and video and some teacher guides and in including that for early learners. Um, and it doesn't matter what discipline you're most interested in, you really can get so much out of these books. They're incredibly detailed, but so easy to follow 
with examples and step-by-step -step instructions about how to make something you probably never thought you were able to create before. And I'm including in things like that, and whether it's photography, how do we take a better photograph? Everyone can point and click, but how can we take that a little bit deeper and to enjoy some of the creative ways we can use a camera, which is one of the most underrated tools you'll ever find. Um, or you might be more interested in drawing. I know that I, I didn't think I was a good drawer until I started exploring some of the tools that iPad provide me with and, and came up with the idea that, you know what, I'm actually not too bad and I've learned a Hi there. I think we've lost Michael. Everyone hearing is okay? So, yeah. Have we totally yeah. lost him? Oh dear. Okay. <laughs> I think Michael is maybe yeah, trying to... Think... Yeah. Um, right. Okay, so where did we get to with Michael? He was telling us all about all the great stuff that we can do um, with everyone can create resources. So I think we'll just carry on. And then if Michael comes back into us, then uh, he can chat about what he's doing. So anyway, we're going to, um, firstly, we're going to kind of talk about what our favourite um, activity was out of the kind of creative activities for kids that Apple have provided as a great resource at the moment. I know Glasgow are doing it as a kind of 30 days challenge for all their teachers. Um, and so my favorite activity is definitely number 29. Um, it is using clips in order to kind of put things in order. We're not even clips, just any video. And I love, I love gathering resources and then putting them in order. So what was your favorite activity uh, from those 30, uh, 30 creative activities for kids? Jen, please. Thanks, Lee. Yeah, my day, my favourite day is actually day one, personify something. I love um, taking an inanimate object and turning it into a character, giving it emotions and using the shapes and markup to do it. It's just so much fun and um, kids just love it. So it's yeah. a great one. What about you, Nicola? What's your favourite? Um, mine is activity five, so day five, which is go on a photo walk. Um, I absolutely love taking photographs, looking back at the memories, but also looking closer at what's around about us in the world as well in a different way. Thank you. And Stuart, what about you? Thank you. My favourite activity is number 27, uh, and that's about becoming an artist. For me, art is all about creativity. It allows you to express yourself. And as a teacher, I was always loved doing those type of lessons. Doing digital art, a great thing is you've got that undo button, which just gives that wee bit of edge and um, confidence as well. There's no fear of making mistakes. I think yeah, um, Nicola's going to teach you some creativity with the camera. Um, but thank you very much. Yeah, thanks, Stuart. I think Michael's done this intentionally so that I have to talk again. <laughs> totally off script. Anyway, yeah, so Nicola's going to uh, show us learning through the lens. So I'm going to um, let Nicola show us that and then hopefully Michael can get back online in a, while she's doing that. So Nicola, I'm going to just give you access to this. 
And the great thing is now I don't have access. So I don't know if Gina in the background, could you give Nicola access to that? I think I'm already sharing. I've got... Oh, brilliant. Yep. Sorry. Go for it then. Thank you. Okay, so as I've said, um, taking photographs is one of my most favourite things to do. Um, even as a little girl looking back at photographs when you have got the photo albums out, absolutely loved it. So I haven't changed at all. I've got over 20,000 photos on my iCloud, which is crazy um, because I just love taking photos so much. And especially of my little boy, Xander, who you'll see appearing here quite often. As Michael said, the camera on the iPad can be underestimated at times it's a fabulous tool built into your mobile device and you can just pick it up and go and when you open the camera you have easy to follow tools that you can use on the left hand side you've got a zoom tool you can just drag the circle up or down to zoom in or out or you can also pinch the screen with your fingers to zoom in or out on your subject top right hand corner we've got live photo HDR which is high dynamic range I would highly recommend putting this on so at the moment you can see it's off if you tap on that icon it will turn yellow and what that does is it helps you capture well lit photographs with the best balance and, and exposure so fantastic tools right there for you the shutter tool is what you use to take the photo when you're in photo mode it's white and when you're going to take a video it changes to red and at the bottom you've got all of your camera modes i'm only going to focus in on a few today um mainly photos um but you just swipe through those or swipe the screen to change i want you to think about really using the camera in a different way when I set you a challenge at the end of, of what I'm about to say here today. Um, I want you to think about getting high and getting low with your camera. So especially looking at that picture on the left, you know, get your camera down low. I've actually got the iPad upside down on that photo so that I can take a photo upwards of my little boy, particularly good for taking photographs of buildings as well. There's Stuart and Jen in the Apple store. I was actually standing on the window ledge in there. I didn't get thrown out for it. Um, but then I love that photo of both of them. They're both looking in different directions and I'm looking down on them. And then the one at the right, um, I must say, some of these photos are before um, lockdown happened. I'm in my mum's driveway and I'm actually sat on the grounds to capture that beautiful sunset and Xander on his bike. As well as that, get close to your subject, either by using the Zoom or physically getting close. The two bottom images, that red one and blue one, that's using the Zoom. Um, and it's amazing the detail you can pick up on things when you actually Zoom right in. The red one is the iPad cover. Um, which you can't see the detail without that zoom tool and the bottom right hand one is one of those spongy mats to stop toddlers and babies hurting themselves and just look at the grain and the pattern as you use that zoom it's absolutely incredible but most of all have fun play around with the camera take loads of photos and have the best fun as you do it so now we're just going to see how the focus works. So that yellow box in the centre of my screen there, I'm trying to take a photograph of that plant. And you can see that the yellow box is the focus tool and that's really helping my camera work hard to take the photo that I want. Now that we see this still, you can see that that yellow box has moved because when you are in photo mode, you can tap anywhere on the screen to choose where that exposure happens. So play around with the light areas and the dark areas in your camera. You'll also notice a very small sunshine next to that box. If you tap and hold on your screen and move your finger up or down, you can change the exposure yourself and play around with it. You can also tap and hold on your subject and auto lock the focus in on them. Really useful um, if we think about in the classroom when we do go back to some sort of normality, especially maybe in the gym hall, if you want to focus in on a, a particular pupil for some evidence for their seesaw account, for example, you know, you could focus in on them and their face will stay in focus as you take your video. We're now going to think about the editing tools as well. I'm just going to highlight some of them now and then you'll see them in action. So we've got the adjust tool and these tools are displayed over the right hand side of your screen. We've got filters and um, you tap on it in your photos app 
and go to edit at the top right hand corner. Yeah, I'm back on. When you go to edit, then taking in to these editing tools. So at the moment, I'm in the adjust tool, and you can see over at the right hand side, I'm moving that little slider up and down to change the exposure. I can then move my way through each and every one of those tools if I wish or just pick out a few that I like so that I can change how that photograph looks and really personalize it. And you can see how the, the details are being picked out by those tools that I'm using. So I absolutely love that you can be your own creator with these tools. If we're looking at the left hand side again, I'm gonna tap on filters, you'll see the little yellow dot change. And if you're not confident or not comfortable with playing around with the adjust tools, there are preset filters for you. And again, you can change the intensity. And finally, you've got a crop tool. You can rotate it, as you can see happening just now. You can crop it by pinching or pulling the corners in. You're able to skew your photographs as well. I think that's quite cool um, that you can do all of these things on your iPad. And then we're going to just look up to the top left hand corner of the screen. You can rotate your photographs. And you can also flip your photographs as well. And the last thing I want to show you in edit mode are the little rectangles. They're going to turn yellow near the top right hand corner in a moment. That allows you to personalize the size of the photograph. This then allows you to place the photo into another project. Say you wanted to make a clip or an iMovie or a keynote and you wanted to crop that photo in some way, then you can do that and tap done once you're finished editing. And the best way to do all of this is just by playing around with it. And there's the finished photo. It looks incredible and all of that done on an iPad. What I want to show you just now are some of my examples of photos that I've taken before we've been in lockdown or during it um, and just tell you what I did to make them look the way they look. So there's one of our favorite, favorite forest walks. I really wanted to pick up Xander's reflection in that puddle. So what I did was I took some normal photos and then I took this one on the right hand side using the preset filters in the, the edit mode. So that is a vivid warm tool. Just look at how I've caught the reflection. I've also got my camera down low and close to that puddle and also the greenery that's picked out in that photo is just incredible. So that's a preset filter. This one is a similar example, but I went in and used the adjust tool. So I've worked on saturation and contrast mainly here and just look at how that landscape is transformed. Absolutely incredible. This one is one of my most favorite photos that I've edited and here, I've utilized the cool tones in the filters and I've also cropped the photo to get rid of that excess um, pavement that we're seeing there. Two of my favorite things about this photo, if you look at the top left hand corner of the edited photo, how those tree branches are really highly contrasted against the, the sky. And also Xander's little eye looking at me as if to say, mum, stop taking pictures of me, which you can't really pick up in the other photo. Also think about adding in um, props to your photographs, bringing something closer to the camera than the, the person that you're shooting. Think about angles and getting close, as I've already said, and don't be afraid to experiment. A lot of these photos, especially that one with the bubbles, um, I were taken by using the bursts feature, which is holding your finger or thumb on that shutter tool for a few seconds and the iPad will take a burst of photos, then you can go in and choose the ones you want. I did not get that with one shot. Play around with light as well. Use what's around about you to explore um, and be creative with your photographs. There's some more ideas of props. Those two there of Jennifer and I, that was in the Apple store, they gave us some um, coloured film, rolled it up and brought it up to the lens. If you don't have anything like that, you know, maybe like a reading overlay you could use or a kitchen roll tube or maybe just rolled up paper. Play around with it and see what you can find. Use things outdoors as well when you're in your garden or if you're out on a walk to enhance your photographs. And this is one of my most favourite ones. On the left, we had one of those blue overlays half covering the lens. And on the right, I used the edit tools to edit that photo of Jennifer. And I just love how it pops. And I love the fact that both of our eyes have come out different colours with, with the tools that we used there. So absolutely fantastic. 
before I finish up, I just want to highlight two other tools that you have on your camera. One being slow-mo. So this was a, a little activity that I did with my little boy. And then we decided to do a slow-mo of the ice. And a lot of slow-mo allows you to see things that you wouldn't normally be able to see with the naked eye. And then again, when looking at some of those leaves in the garden, you could use slow-mo to, to focus in and see movement as well. Another tool, is the time lapse function. Again, you would need to be filming at least two minutes of footage to get something out of this. And this was taken quite a while ago. There's Lee taking some photographs of the, the greenery there in the park as well. Um, but just get outdoors and have fun and explore. Slow motion and time lapse are great for science activities to see things in a different way. Um, Organising your photos. So when you go into the Photos app, if you tap on photos at the bottom, this is the view you will see and you can look at your photos using years, months or days so you're able to search and filter. You can also tap on albums at the bottom within the photos app and this is my preferred way for seeing what, what the photos look like because you can create your own albums using that top left hand corner there, you've got the little plus icon and further down that menu you have media type, so all of your media is categorized. So if you just want to, you know, flick through your live photos, for example, then you can just look at live photos. I want to set you a wee challenge. After this webinar today, I'm going to upload Xander's photo walk. Um, and I would like you to try and make one of your own. So you can go over to XMA Learning and have a little look. And if you decide to make one, we'd love it if you could use the hashtag walk with XMA so that we're able to find your um, little movies as well of your photo walk. So thank you very much. I'm now going to hand over to Jennifer, who's going to show you how to bring your photos to life. So let me just pop Jennifer over. Thanks so much, Nicola. You've got such a gorgeous model in Xander for all your lovely photos. So thank you so much. So as Nicola said, I'm going to take you through markup. I absolutely love Markup as a tool. It's a very simple tool that's built into your device, but one that can be used in so many different ways. It can be really stretched as far as your imagination. And I love how when I used it with pupils, it helped them to engage in the learning whilst exploring many areas of the curriculum. Markup can be done with a tool such as an Apple Pencil or a Logitech Crayon, but also just with your fingers. The examples I have today use a mixture of both Apple Pencil and my fingers, and I'll let you decide which is which. All of the examples today are just that, examples, so please adapt them as you see fit for the age and stage of your learners. When using markup, remember you can always revert back to the original photo or image, but you can also take a screenshot if you want to keep both. So let's access markup. This is an image of a purple screen, which I just use um, as a background for lots of my devices. So when you're in any image, you just go up to edit at the top right. And when you're there, you can see three dots at the top. You just tap there and you'll get the option for markup. Tap markup and then you get your mar markup toolbar appear on your screen. So what I'm going to do is just take you through the tools, the main tools in the markup toolbar. But the best way is just to explore them. So as this little video goes through, I'll just talk you through it all. So we have pen, highlighter, pencil, rubber. We have the lasso tool, the ruler. Then we have our colours and a colour wheel at the bottom, which expands the options. And in our plus, we have extra tools such as text, magnifier and shapes. So to initiate a tool, all I have to do is tap on the pen and then choose the colour I wish. If I tap that again, I get to choose the thickness and opacity of that colour that I'm using, and then I'm ready to go. I can just start marking up my photo. And it's the same process for whatever tool I wish to use. So I'm going to go into the highlighter next. And like I said, it's good to explore them because each tool looks very different um, when you use them and creates different effects, especially when changing the thickness and transparency. So let children explore and explore yourselves. It's the best way. Um, to find out what tool is going to work best for the job in hand. Just using the pencil here to add a little bit more detail. And then I'm going to use the rubber. So when I use the rubber, I have two options. I can erase objects or as pixels. 
So if I take the object, first of all, it erases the whole thing I've done without lifting my finger or pencil. And then the pixel eraser does it bit by bit, as you can see here. And the plus, we have text and shapes and magnifier. So if I tap a shape, I can then choose the color. I can resize it and move it about my page. And you can see my toolbars change. So I can now change the thickness of the shape or I can make it a block shape. If I tap it again, I can then copy or duplicate and have the same on the, on the other side. With text, I just tap text, start typing, and then I'm able to change the font and size as well. You can see there that I've moved my toolbar over to the side and into the corner. This allows me to basically have the whole page to mark up if I choose to. And it's great, all I need to do is tap my finger on it and drag it into a corner if I want it to go into a little circle at the, at the side. Or if I want to move it, I just need to take it over and it'll open up wherever I put it. So great for being able to access absolutely everything. So that's a whistle stop tour of the tools, but like I say, it's best just to explore. Okay, so let's get into some examples. In class, I love, I used to love giving the children a part, a picture of their local area, playground, or part of the school, and asking them to mark it up to improve it or to put their to see what they would really love to do with that space. This is a really easy task to do at home. This could be a picture of the garden, a room in the house, or on your daily bit of exercise, you could take a picture. Here's one of my garden. And here is a markup version of that, because if I'm a child, I definitely want a pool with a shoot in my garden, especially when the weather is as lovely as it is. What's really nice from there, is that you can then um, add labels and um, annotate your markup design. This gives children a chance to explain fully why they've um, done what they have to the picture, what each part represents. And if children are maybe slightly too young um, to use those tools, they could easily do a screen record and just chat about their picture, explaining all the different parts. So lots of variety there. This would be a really easy task for teachers to send out or for parents to do with children at home. So another few examples of using markup in this way. These are things that are just all around me just now um, that I have access to at home. So for example, the bottom left there is a selfie, which I put a black and white filter over that Nicola showed us earlier, and then I marked that up. The bit emoji is me practicing my um, face painting skills without getting too messy. But everything is just what's around. So the love one is a crisp that looked in the shape of a love heart. So I took a picture of it and designed um, a picture to go with that. The top right picture is when I'm on my daily walk. It was just a beautiful day. So I took a picture and designed um, it to look slightly different. You could take a picture of a candle holder like I have in the middle there or, or um, toys that you have in the house. Or for example, the Muku is just a screenshot from the internet which I've then marked up. The possibilities are absolutely endless. So next up, we have um, what the, the day I was talking about at the beginning, um, giving objects a personality. I absolutely love this. It's so much fun. And, and I love that you can turn a flip-flop, glasses case, phone, or football into a person or a personality or an emotion. The great thing about these as well is that you don't need to be very arty in order to make them look good. These are mainly done with shapes. So for example, if you take the phone cover, which is the red one, that's all been made with circles. And then I just drew on the eyelashes and the circles were just manipulated and then duplicated so that the, both eyes were exactly the same size. The little emojis and the um, stone people, they're obviously slightly different. The little emojis are done on bubble wrap and it was just in a parcel that I got delivered. Now with that and with the stones, they were obviously a lot smaller in the picture. So the great thing is that I could zoom in on the markup and have a much bigger canvas to work with for my emojis and my little stone people. And then it meant that when I zoomed back out, my drawing was still there, but it, fit, it was the right size. What I love is that children could be doing this as a little task to create lots of emotion cards for themselves. At school, they have access to ways to verbalise how they're feeling without actually having to speak. They have a card that says how they're feeling or maybe a chart or a display. And at home, they might not have this at the moment. So by giving them some um, objects around the house, they can create a whole host of emotions and personalities that they can use 
um, to verbalise how they're feeling during this time. And it's a lot of fun as well. Next up, we have a shape hunt. Again, you can vary this so easily for age and stage. And it can be from find me a rectangle, find me a circle, to looking for angles, 3D shapes, whatever works best for um, your learners. Shapes are absolutely everywhere. So like, for example, in the kitchen unit that there's a picture of there, it could literally be drawing around the shapes. So drawing around rectangles or using different colours for 2D and 3D shapes. Or with the garden example, children could create a key and then colour in the picture to respond to that key. This is a really nice one for teachers to be able to send out no matter what platform you're using and for children to then complete and send back or for children to send to each other and create a little game. Lastly, I want to show you the magnifier. This is an amazing tool and I absolutely love it. For those of you who are wondering, this is a picture of my slipper. And I'm just going to show you a little video of the magnifier moving around that. So when you have the magnifier, which is in the plus part of the markup tools, you have two dots on it. You have a blue dot and a green dot. The blue dot um, allows you to um, change the size of the magnifier and the green dot allows you to zoom in when using it. This is great, not only for looking at my slipper, but for going outside for taking a picture of nature and really zooming in. So Nicola's pictures of the leaves would have been great with the magnifier and we could really go in and see everything that was there. Finding some mini beasts and looking at all the different parts of them. Or, as I've done here, we could have a materials challenge where we're looking at textiles and materials around the house and asking children to explore them and guess what they are and find them around the house. So the sets that I've got here were all in my home. I did not have to leave my, my front door to get them. The stones were just outside, so I didn't have to leave to get those either. And all I've done here is taken a picture of a material. I've then put the magnifier on it, so it magnifies the image. And then I've taken a screenshot of the magnified image. And then I've put them into the circles for Keynote, but you wouldn't actually need to do that for this. And then what that does, it allows children to really look at how the material or textile is made up and to go and explore. And again, teachers could do something like this, post um, to their learners for them to guess. Learners could do it with each other. It's such an easy tool to use and one that can be used in so many different ways. I could honestly keep going with the ideas that you can use for markup. It's such a versatile tool. And I hope what I've shown you today has sparked an idea that you can take forward. I want to thank you so much for listening and I'm going to pass you on to Stuart who is our resident artist and you're going to love what he's got to show you. That's great, thank you very much Jane. That looks like you had a lot of fun um, while you were doing that um, too, which is what this is all about. Having fun is a kind of wee message that's coming out through all of our re sessions here. Today, I'm going to help you explore your inner artist and maybe find some artistic skills you never knew you had. It's unbelievable how much I enjoyed creating these drawings. I properly switched off um, from everything from the outside world, so why not give these a go? In your free time, it doesn't just have to be for your pupils. Everyone can create guides, have some amazing references and amazing tips that you can use, and a lot of the ideas that I'm using, I actually gleaned from the drawing book. Everything that I'm going to show you today will be on Keynote um, and everything that I'll be drawing with I have used an Apple Pencil but use what you have whether that's the end of a stylus or your finger. Remember this has been recorded so you might want to rewatch this back, maybe pause it at times, I'm not expecting anyone to draw along with me here. So let's open up our Keynote and get started. I'm going to tap on the wee plus button at the top right there and I'm going to choose a new theme, the basic one, just to get my canvas. Once I'm in here, to make sure that I've got a bigger drawing field, I'm going to change some of the setups. I'm going to tap on my three wee dots here in the right hand side. I'm going to tap on document setup and I'm going to tap on slide size. I'm now going to choose the ratio 43. If you're on the latest iOS, you might have to do this. If you're not yet up to date, it might already be set this way. But in doing so, I've now got a bigger field to draw on. All I'm going to do now is just tap and delete my presentation titles there. 
and let's go ahead and get drawn. The first thing I'm going to show you is this self-portrait here. Kind of a line drawn um, type deal. What you get here is some kind of Quentin Blake style arts. Let's take a wee look at how we do this then. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add in a picture of myself. You could take a selfie or use one that you've already had. Tap on the plus button, go to over video and choose a recent picture of yourself. I'm going to apologise, you're going to have to stare at my face for the next few minutes. Next thing I'm going to do though is I'm going to tap on my wee paintbrush tool here. I'm going to change the opacity and just drop it down. This will make it easier for me to draw on top of. Okay, let's get our drawing tools up. Tap on the E plus, tap on drawings, and similar to markup, we've got our tools down at the bottom there. Some of the new features, we've got undo and redo. Like I said at the very beginning, really crucial when you're doing digital art. And again, it doesn't matter if you make a mistake, you can always go back. I've got my pen, pencil, crayon, fill, erase, select, and my color palettes. And I'll go over these as I go through this demonstration. Okay, all I'm going to do now is, using that pen tool, is draw around some of the key features of my face, my hair and neck. The nice thing about this is I can leave out the features that I don't want to show, so I'm not going to draw in my wrinkles. I can zoom in to go over some finer detail, just by pinching and going in and out. I've obviously speeded this video up, and likewise with the kids, I'd be saying to you, Take your time. Take a wee bit of time as you're going over it. But once you've got most of it, you'll maybe have something that looks a bit like this. So again, all I've done is just draw over my key features. I'm going to tap done up at the top. I'm going to select my picture from the background. And I'm just going to delete it. And that's it. Really simple, but really effective way of getting these line drawing styles. You can use this in a number of ways. Dig out some of your old photographs from maybe your holidays and draw over them. Maybe some of your pets. Or even just a nice way you can do this is to create your own colouring pages this way. Draw over a photograph, delete the image, and then you can colour it in your own ways. Whether this is saving it as an image, printing it out, sending it on, or even colouring um, using a digital method. Let's go a little deeper and have a wee look at that just now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add some colour to the self-portrait. Rather than deleting my image here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to resize it. So I'm going to scale it down and just pop it to the side there for a reference. Let's go back into my drawing tools now. And I'm going to select the pen here. I'm going to choose a hair colour and I'm going to start colouring in. But what you're going to notice is I'll actually colour over some of those features. That's because the opacity is too high. I'm going to tap in the pen again and I'll reduce the opacity this time. Now when I colour on top, you can still see the features and my original drawing. This is a really nice way of creating layers to any drawings and building up some nice visual effects. Let's take a look at this with the crayon tool this time. You see again there, I can choose the thickness for my crayon, thicker areas for colour and wider parts, or thinner if I've got some fine details to do. And again, just by selecting various colours, I can layer on top. If I tap my colour at the right hand side there, what I can also do is swipe along and I've got my colour wheel. So I can choose different colours from this side. But at the bottom left, you can see a wee eyedropper tool. I'm going to tap on that. And using my picture as a reference, I can scan over my hair colour, find a hue, and then just colour in this way. And it gives you a more accurate colour for your picture. Unfortunately for me, that's a bit grey. I'll show you that again, though. So tapping on the wee colour wheel, swiping along, the eye drop, and I'll choose a wee skin colour this time. And again, this will create a really nice layered up effect. I can change the opacity. I can get some different uh, colours from different features of my face. I'll do the right hand side of my face now. Same again, just a wee colour palette. Swiping along, choosing one, and colouring on. Build up and build up and take your time, and you get some striking results. 
I'll say striking because I don't know how much that looks like me, but it's something of a conversation starter anyway. Another nice wee feature though, if we take you back to this one, is the fill tool at the bottom. It looks a little bit like an oil pastel, an oil tube. If I tap on that and then tap on sections of my drawing, it will fill in the whole colour shape. What I get here is a kind of nice pop arty um, style feel. If I was to go on, we get this really nice and effective coloured drawings. What I can do then is I can play about with the background colours or adding in some of the shapes from Keynote and I can get this artwork that really pops. Again, that was just by changing background features and adding in, adding in that was a fingerprint shape or even some of the star ones and having a wee play about with the text. As a teacher, we would study lots of different works of artists. One of my favourites to cover was Andy Warhol, who found the beauty in everyday items. His famous Campbell soup cans always brings out some great conversations of colour and advertisements. And naturally, we would try and put our own wee Scottish twist with this in the classroom. Ultimately, this would come to Iron Brew. Repeat the process that I've saved of doing, add in a picture, drop the opacity down, and draw over the features. Again, I've obviously sped this video up. But afterwards, what I can do is use that fill tool again and create my own iron brew cans. Again, what I get is a really nice pop party and the Warhol inspired art. I could even put them together and a similar style. And it's something that's quite um, impactful and quite eye catching as well. And find the beauty in everyday items. Look around your house, draw around it colour it in, fill it in, in lots of different ways. One of the wee things I'm going to do as well as Nicola is I'm going to share some of these templates for you to draw over. So don't worry if you're worried about drawing over on top of things. What I've got here is some wee superheroes and a wee task that you can do is with these wee superheroes, same again, you know, draw over it and you can turn yourself into your own superhero. Last wee thing I want to cover with you is another artist, his name is Thank You X. He's a mural artist from America. Whilst as a teacher, I used to love doing mural art as well and build up a lot of pictures that the kids would make. Another thing that you could do, digital art style, is using one of these cubes, design your own one, and you can create your own collage of different cubes. And again, this is another one that I'm going to share with you and ask for you to send back to me and I'll create a big collage of everyone's cube and we'll see what we can get eh, over time. Why not give it, your, give it a go yourself and see what you can create? I'm going to pass you on to Lee for some clips and some work on filmography. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Stuart. And I've got about 10 minutes, I think, to get through clips, my goodness. You've seen some great creative ideas which you can do with your iPads now, all inbuilt, easy to use, and with no need for Wi-Fi in most cases. Um, and they're all amazing on their own, but imagine taking another step. Just try, going to try and play here. There we go. Um, and um, using an app like Clips to showcase, showcase all your lovely creativity. So what is Clips? Clips is an iOS um, app for creating and sharing fun videos with text, effects, graphics, animation, and so much more. Teachers and learners can use Clips to create, a video, to create video presentations which are engaging and accessible. And I'll take you through some of the features that make Clips so easy to use and yet so effective and professional looking. Teachers might use this app to create short video tutorials to intro school projects or topics and flip the learning or even to record some video tutorials in advance so that learners can watch that video time and time again at their own speed. Students can use clips in a creative way to demonstrate their learning, to describe a concept, deliver a book report, tell a story, or interview a classmate on a topic, for example. Clips is great at getting learners to think about not only the content of a project, but the order of how that project must go in order for it to make sense. And that's what we kind of saw in that number 29 of the creative activities. So. When my boy, little boy Thomas, was given this COVID-19 capsule project from his teacher, 
I immediately thought that he could use clips to showcase his learning, not just scribble on a worksheet. Firstly, Thomas used the markup tool, just like how Jen showed you, to write over the image of the worksheet and plan his project. Um, using the structure of the intro task, we used the camera, as Nicola demonstrated, to video his introduction, and he went on a kind of scavenger hunt to find and take photos of his favourite toy, his favourite activity and colour, etc. All those different ideas that were asked of him. What he couldn't find to take pictures of, he searched images on Safari and he saved them to his camera roll. He also used Keynote as a canvas, like what Stuart showed us. And then he also used the screenshot tool of the iPad, which is just pressing on the sleep wake and the home button at the same time to take a photo of his drawings in Keynote. So these were also available in his camera roll. So some time was taken in the prep before even going into clips, but this was a lesson in itself and he really enjoyed that. And I think actually one of the creative activities is just to go on a scavenger hunt. So kind of linking into that. Um, you can also take footage straight from clips if you wish, and I'll show you how to do that too. So going into clips, there's clips um, on your iPad. Um, when you go into it, you're taken straight into the selfie camera mode. Um, unless this, this is the very, very first time you've accessed it, and in that case, there's a wee intro and video that you can watch. Getting started this way is very simple and quick. Just hold on the record button, which is the big red or pink um, button to capture a video of yourself on the spot if you wish. You can pinch and drag while recording to smoothly kind of zoom and pan across images for an extra little bit of funkiness. If you don't want your own face on camera or you would like someone else to video you, you can access the front facing camera at the top by tapping on the switch icon and then you've got your front facing camera. You can now um, also go to your previous projects as well as creating a new one by tapping on the, um, the top left hand corner. Um, touch and hold the large pink button to record or if you want to lock recording you can also swipe up on it and just speak while recording and then stop recording either by letting go or tapping on it again if you've locked that recording. If like um, Thomas however you've gathered your resources first you can access these uh, photos from your camera roll from your photos app and you can bring them to life by panning and zooming and adding effects and live titles and the way we would do this is just to go to your library there and then select the photo and video that, or video that you would like to add so just by albums and i think nicola showed us a little bit how you could organize your albums to get your photos a bit easier touch and hold for the length of the time that you would like the photo to appear or you can lock it and then pinch and drag the image if you wish. And Clips records any movements or add-ons to your project in a series of clips. You might also wish to add some posters. And this is a third kind of option that you can see at the bottom there. And these kind of add some structure to your project. To do this, tap on the poster and choose a poster which best fits with the genre of your project. So for this time capsule, Thomas choose this kind of space looking poster to start off his project. Once you've selected the poster, it will download and you can now tap on the text and edit it by typing on the keyboard. Or if you don't want to type, you can even dictate. You might want to also add some background music to add to the effect. So tap on the music symbol in the top right hand corner and tap on the soundtracks to choose from a vast amount of genres. The great thing about the soundtracks is that it very cleverly and magically will reduce in volume if you're speaking, but then it gets louder again if no one's speaking into the mic. Once you're happy with the soundtrack that you've chosen, so you can play it, you can review it, um, you then just tap done. And now that, um, that soundtrack will go through the whole of your project. Now, although I wouldn't necessarily use live titles myself with posters as well, Thomas wanted this because he loves live titles and live titles is another great tool and a discussion point that I used to use in class as well. So you can ask your students, why would you use live captions? Why might they be important and who could it benefit? Creating live titles is an opportunity to stress the importance of accessibility in media creation. So as I said, Thomas wanted to use them throughout. So again, there's a really nice selection of live titles to choose from, just tap on the one that you wish to use. Another thing to note is that you can change the language you're using for in live titles. So, for example, if like me, modern languages, you're creating a modern languages project and you might be talking French or Spanish, Italian, German, there's a whole host of languages there. You can tap on the language you want and the live titles will change accordingly. 
This is not a translation tool. I've been asked that before. It just means that when you're talking that other language, it picks up the live titles in that language too, rather than gobbledygook. Again, touch and hold or swipe up to lock the recording and record for as long as needed while you talk. And make sure that your volume on your iPad is up too, because sometimes that affects the, um, the volume. Review by tapping on the play icon, and you can review individual clips by tapping on whichever clip you want to listen to. And you can delete that clip if you don't like it, you can retake it, you can move the clips about, it's brilliant. Now, these live titles came up very accurately. <laughs> um, I think I helped Thomas speak into this, even COVID-19 came up, but sometimes names, for example, my name, Lee, which is actually L-E-I-G-H, isn't spelled correctly. In this case, you can edit the live titles just by tapping on the live title icon and then selecting the word misspelled, just double tap on it and type in the correction. You can also trim your clip if, like me, you waffle a bit at the beginning and the end, or if somebody asks a question at the start that you don't want included, just tap on the beginning or the end of the clip and slide to edit it. And once you're happy with what you've got, apply. And I love the fact that you can listen to your clip as many times as possible, review it, edit it, redo it as many times as you like. You can also add effects to jazz up your project, not just in posters, but in any of your clips. Effects include animated text, they include stickers, which are really funky. I've always loved the Star Wars ones. There's Toy Story, Mickey and Friends, and of course, we've got our emojis. Once you've selected the text, sticker, or emoji, you can just move that item to where you want to put it. You can pinch and drag it and resize it. And again, you can review what you've added. Again, tap dunce, uh, dunce, done once you're happy with your clip and it will go back to selfie camera. And from here, you can do all of this again um, as many times as you like. Thomas here was now going to introduce himself, um, going back to that project, and he was going to talk about who he was, how tall he was, and he did some of this in selfie mode with live titles. By selecting the live titles again, positioning and then talking and swiping up the record button, he was in control. And he actually took himself up to his bedroom to do it in peace and quiet, and he, he did some great stuff. Some clips he also got myself or his big brother Harry or even his dad to video by flipping the camera. And this can be done with classmates as well if we go back to school, if and when, to give the effect of an interview. You can add filters in camera mode to also add to the effect you're looking for from a project. So for example, for a news report, you could um, also add text. Um, you can make it look like a real BBC kind of studio or that you're, you're, you're live from somebody's house. Again, move and pinch to your liking and tap to delete or edit the text. And using the keyboard and dictation tool, you can do this. Add stickers to add personality, or if you're a little bit shy, to cover your face or just to have some fun and become another character. In this case, a cool dude who loves cookies and he's showing his cheeky side. Once happy, tap on done, and you can play to review again. So intro done, sorry, I don't think there's sound there, but he was talking. So, so intro done, including poster as a front cover, some chat using video and effects. Now we want to add those photos that we have in our camera roll that he gathered on the scavenger hunt and let's bring them to live. So all we do again is tap on that library that I showed you before. Select the photo. So I think the first thing we were gonna talk about was my favorite toy. Okay. You could add live titles again and just talk about what that toy is, why you like it, because giving opinions is always something that we're looking to get out of our learners. You could also use those posters again to sequence your clips and thoughts. Now, I've talked about my favourite toy, for example. I'm going to show you what my favourite activity is, and then you could go to posters. I already mentioned being able to dictate, but you can also use a keyboard by tapping on the globe, not only to change language, but if you tap and hold, you can select the emojis as well that way. Once you're happy with what you've added, tap apply, and you've got yourself another clip. Um, sometimes you may wish to um, add some photos, videos, but not your voiceover. And in this case, you can select mute. Oh, sorry. Just talking about adding the rugby ball there. There we go, so mute. 
Okay, so sometimes I have been talking in the background whilst adding a picture and tapping on that uh, record button, but I didn't want to be heard, so you can just tap on mute. Okay, play to review again. This is great as you can review, edit, delete, and add as much as you would like. And you can also change the order of the clips, I think I said before, by tapping and holding and moving them to where you want. I quite frequently add my posters at the very end, but then I want them at the beginning. It's very easy to kind of move them about. Happy with your project? You just tap done and now you can share your project. And social sharing is a big component of clips and leads into digital citizenship and being responsible and aware of what this means. Getting real life feedback is great, but try to think about how you could do so to model safe, responsible sharing. So by exporting your project, you could share with others who might add to it. They will then be able to edit um, using clips as long as they also have the clips app. If they're near one another, they could use AirDrop or you could use another form to um, uh, maybe Seesaw Shobi to add that project so somebody else can edit it. You could also um, save the video once you're done and create that video, it goes into your camera roll. So once you tap on save video, it'll save to your library and you'll now be able to watch your creation as a video in your camera roll. And just remember when it does go into your camera roll to unmute it, because many times I go in, I play it and I go, oh, yeah, I forgot to tap that. So that was another bit of a whistle stops tour of clips. But as I said earlier, you can use it to report on anything in a creative way. You could use it to interview someone, interview a member of the family, even your dog make your thinking visible as a teacher and explain a concept or flip this and ask your students not only to give answers to a task, but to talk through how they got the answer using clips and the effects. And here's a last example of how Thomas used the camera and keynote on a scavenger hunt to illustrate what uses electricity in the house. Add on another layer to explain why and how using clips, and this adds more depth of understanding, critical thinking, communication skills, as well as loads of creativity. We all know that if you have to explain something, you need to think more deeply about it. As well as the great resources um, that can be found when you just do a quick search of everyone can create or Apple clips for more information. Um, my first stop shop would always be to sign up to Apple Teacher and you get loads of top tips and ideas by and for educators. So please, please, please go to Apple Teacher. As well as that, Apple have got these great videos, one of them including create engaging videos with clips, which will lead you through how to do these, or by all means, review any, uh, any part of this video today that you've seen. And Michael has got about two minutes to just conclude this. And thank you so much for everybody's patience today. Michael, are you back on? I think Michael is back on. I'm back, I'm back Yay. on, yes. There you go, Michael. Much. You've literally Hello, got two yeah. minutes. <laughs> two minutes excellent that's great so is it back now with me yep should be michael i gave you permission did you um well there we go okay i'll be very very quickly very very quick we only had one question which is about how can you download um these books you can download them to your mac and to your ipad then if you've done it through the iBookstore, you can use your iTunes to bring it across to your PC. They're great resources and for young and old alike, you'll develop actual skills in all four of these disciplines. So please explore them. Again, don't forget Apple Teacher Learning Centre, but just a final reminder from us that the XMA School Store is open for business. We can deliver direct to your home address with live order tracking, um, secure login to get those accessories and things you need to explore your creativity further. Can I thank everybody for the patience when I dropped off in the middle of a power cut? Um, and please, if you've got any questions or thoughts, please pass them on to schools at xma.co.uk, including whether you want more webinars, in particular webinars that you want you want us to, to look maybe a deeper dive into one of those four disciplines, for example, on video or drawing or whatever. Uh, but thank you very much for your patience today. And listen, stay safe, look after yourself. Thank you. Bye-bye.